Hey everybody, welcome to Shapes.io and click. Okay, there we go. Game is beginning. So hey guys, we're doing a speed run attempt and mad props to a Bill Evans, a YouTuber named Bill Evans. I'm kind of copying his method as best I can for doing a speed run of this game for the first 12 levels. And I'm a, it works for the uh, level 12, to getting to level 12. It works for the master speed run achievement, but... Um, I do not make that. <laughs> it takes a lot of dexterity and a lot of skill, and I didn't get it this time, and I'm gonna have to do a lot of practicing if I'm gonna get it. But at least I can kind of talk you through this, and I will tell you that yes, I do manage to get the uh, the 60 minute achievement, which I think is the novice speed run. So anyway, to kind of talk you through it, this, this method is really awesome because it actually gets you doing the stuff that needs to be done plus it also has you set up it, it's got a good plan for using your time to set up for the needs of the future for the future levels so what i'm doing here is i am getting all the circles i can to the hub and then um, as you can see i'm slapping some slicers down on the circle belts to help uh, help the process out to get the half circles that we're going to need and you can also see i've got the squares already being fed into the hub and that helps the uh, the level, the uh, tier up needs. And you can see, I've already got a tier up already. So that's pretty awesome. And uh, But yeah, this method is all about using your time, like I said, both to meet the needs that are pressing and the things you're gonna be needing in the future, because there's a lot of things you gotta do that take a lot of time. Okay, now at this point, We've got the circles and the squares being fed with the slicers as, the, as it's been introduced. Oh, and we got the balancers, there we go. So now we need uh, stars. And I don't remember where, I think it's for tearing up. And you can see this design right here where we take eight extractors and consolidate them down into two belts and then into one. So see that design right there? Take note of that because it is used heavily in this, uh, in this speed run method. So now we're gonna bring it as close to the hub as we can, but we're not introducing it just yet because we still want those squares. Now we need half the uh, half squares. So we're notice, just throw the slicers right down. No particular attempt at neatness or ratios or anything like that. But you can see um, we take the balancers. We've just had the balancers introduced so we can start to introduce them into our methodology and they are huge. Notice I cut off that row of squares, um, not a huge deal. Okay, so at this point, if I'm, I've got the paper in front of me that I'm using, and by the way, I'm recording this after the fact, if you didn't catch that already, it's hard to comment while you're doing the run, so I found it easier just to, just to add the sound after the fact. Plus, even Bill Evans, you know, mad props to him, but even his video had no sound, and I can understand why. I mean, it's kind of a pain in the neck to, to do this while you're concentrating on the game. So anyway, here we've erased all of the uh, circular or er, circle extractors, or not the extractors, we're keeping the extractors, but we're uh, redirecting the circles here now that we've got the, uh, now that we've got, um, what do you call them, the, uh, the balancers. So what we do here is we're setting up a balancing and rotating array that's going to allow us to create the uh, half circles that are pointing upward, the where the upper half of the circle is maintained. Obviously, we can't do that with the slicer alone. We need to have the uh, we need to have the rotator for that. And you know what? I feel so stupid, and I'm sure there are people screaming at me that never said anything. But throughout this whole process, there's a few th things, basics that you have to. Uh, master to do this and I never used up to this point which is the uh, the belt planner notice the green line you see every so often that's the belt planner you just hold shift I've never done that before also uh, a couple of others using the shift key to like click and drag um, click and drag components as you do this so like the uh, the balancers right there the slicers I just I was able to use the uh, shift key to drag it and the uh, control key worked out really useful for, you know, like holding a belt in a particular orientation so that when you click to drag it, it doesn't automatically pull it in that configuration. So if you want a belt to point straight up, but you got to 
but you've got to drag it sideways without redirecting the belt. You can do that by holding the control key. Plus the, uh, um, what is it? The Q key uses, works as a pipette and it's right there. It's, it's right there in the upper left and I never used it. So now I did, very helpful. Okay, so now what's happening is we've got some of the slicers being directed up to the hub, some of the sliced circles that are in the proper orientation, but now we're also taking half of that array and creating another rotating array and slicer array so that we can create quarter circles, which haven't yet popped up, but they will. This is called, this is part of the whole planning. Again, Bill Evans, mad props to him. Look him up, check the video out for yourself. Uh, warning again, there's no sound, but, uh, but yeah, he really did a fantastic job and I hope I can, my 48 year old brain can emulate this enough to actually um, do this quick and nimbly enough to, uh, to get the 30 minute achievement. I actually hope I do. We shall see. Okay, so we've done that array and if you hear paper flipping, you better believe it because I actually made a Word document to, uh, to cover this whole thing. So what are we doing now? Okay, we're getting rid of the squares. We're, cons well, all the uh, stuff coming off the squares. We're keeping the extractors, but what we're doing is we're consolidating one bank of extractors into one belt. So four into one, and it's gonna go straight to the hub. The other four are going to go, see, I, I could have used three, but I used five, but I didn't waste time deleting it. And that's a good thing, if you make a mistake, just don't waste time correcting it. See if you can click and drag to save time. And this set of squares goes to a slicer. And that helps uh, feed the need for, uh, for tearing up. And you're gonna need to. That's part of this. You have to be able to tear up. So just following this, you know, you're able to do it. Okay, now, knowing that up in the future, there's actually going to be a need for, for uh, half circles that are upside down. Notice the, the uh, rotators just got added to, to flip those half circles upside down. Okay, here is kind of the, the heartbeat of this whole thing and probably the hardest to grasp is you have to set up four, uh, uh, four arrays of painters. We haven't even got the painter yet, but the way he set this up, <clears throat> the way the planning works, you, uh, you get the painter in the process of setting this up. So it's pretty cool. So anyway, but in order to kind of set up the grid for constructing these, you have to set up um, 20 balancers high pointing to the right. That's what I did. I mean, okay, there's the painter. 20 balancers in this configuration pointing to the right. They are 20 high and uh, 12 wide. That's what you set up the grid and that's going to, uh, the way they're constructed, the way these arrays are constructed, it's going to allow you to set up a, a four arrays of painters and you'll see how we go and again i'm using the click and drag which is something that i never would be able to do if i <laughs> i wouldn't be able to do any of this without knowing that um also you'll notice that as this goes um every so often you're going to see you know upgrades start flashing as soon as they flash just hit the f key which i didn't do i like drag my mouse over wasting time to click on the star i could have just hit the f key Anyway, I'll remember that in the future. So, okay, there's the 12. Um, and, okay, just so you know, I there is some editing going on in this video. I've done some editing because I made some... There's some things I... Like, I actually forgot to pause the game and somebody showed up. And I had to talk to them and that wasted some time. So, I guess in my defense... Um, they're worth definitely things that I next time around I'll be able to save time because they won't happen. But there is editing happen. Okay, now notice how, how the uh, the process for setting up this uh, these offset balancers. See that? You see what's happening right now? There's a couple of tweaks that have to be done, a couple of deletions, and just pay close attention to how that's done. And um, oops, I should have added one more there. I should have added one more. Uh, and you'll see later on, it uh, kind of adds to the confusion, is there should be the offset row there of balancers. There should be 12, not 11, and I left 11. And that caused problems for me later. But yeah, this just kind getting this method down was probably, see right there, I added the 12th. That one I did correctly. 
Just pay attention to this method because this is key to getting this thing done quickly. And it took me a while. It, it, I'm gonna have to keep practicing to get it down, but. But what's cool is this design works with painters, it works with stackers, and it also works with uh, paint mixers. So you're actually gonna set up other arrays as well, uh, but these four are the one you gotta start working on. And I think if I remember correctly, we wanna concentrate on the lower two, which I'm gonna call array three and array four, which are the bottom two. So uh, you see right here, the goal is to get uh, red circles, okay? So we gotta find a source of circles and red paint, but keep in mind that notice I went quite a ways to the west to look for them. That's fine because I'm actually leaving room to the west of the painters, and I put this together all jacked up. Look at that, I put the, the, put the, put the slicer in the wrong place, good lord. Anyway, I didn't catch that until I watched the video, but whatever. I'll make sure I don't do that mistake next time. But anyway, you wanna make sure that you find your source of circles and uh, red paint farther to the west. Leave yourself a room for another whole set of arrays, which so give yourself like, you know, 50, maybe 50 spaces, 50 squares. So you notice that I gave myself quite a bit of distance and I even redirected the belt here to go around where I knew the, uh, what are going to be paint mixing arrays. There's going to be mixing arrays or, that are going to go to the west of the painting arrays. I hope all this makes sense. But anyway, the goal here is to work on the level that you see there, which is the red circles. And I'm bringing, oh, I'm trying to remember. I'm bringing the circles to where I think they go. And then of course we're going to bring the paint. And notice every time, oops, Every time we're doing the uh, we're doing the eight extractors with the six balancers, seven balancers actually, the three and three and one, and bringing it down to one belt. And throughout the game, that throughout this attempt, that works. That's going to be just fine. Um, but yeah, so now we bring the bring the uh, red paint, and you know you can sort of run on autopilot as you do this. I mean, you don't have to do everything exact. You have to be flexible, but you do have to kind of keep in mind what feeds on these, uh, on these uh, painting arrays are for paint and what are for the uh, shape that's going to be painted. And I constantly have to like uh, take a look, uh, scroll out and make sure I can pick up where the tops and bottoms of these painters are. And I can see I'm already confused here because I kind of messed up. I can see where I messed up. But, you know, whatever. We're going through it, and now I'm trying to figure out where the circles go, and I think that is correct. And then the paint goes to the level above that. So there you go. That works. Okay, so, yep. And also we gotta keep in mind, purple circles are coming. Gonna need those. I'm uh, taking a look at the uh, things we're going to need but we're going to get to those purple circles after the red ones um so yeah now comes the time where we start setting up the uh, a, a painting array and this this whole process right here is kind of a mind screw a little bit like right here setting up these tunnels and you could just kind of click and drag them now notice we've got entrances and exits pointing in different directions but that doesn't matter we're gonna leave the uh, we're gonna leave the superfluous pieces there. We just don't need to waste time trying to delete them. They're not actually in our way. So that's you're gonna notice a lot of this process really is just kind of you know you make mistakes, you kind of leave them in place, and that's not even really a mistake. That's just allows you to work faster. Now because I confuse myself here, now see the balancer, see where I'm trying to put the painter and there's a balancer kind of to the upper left right there. There should actually be, um, we're on the red paint there. You see where the red paint comes in, the first balancer it hits, there should actually be a balancer behind that. And you're gonna see, I actually end up correcting that. So um, you're gonna see, I kind of botch this setup here. And I'm, you notice I'm kind of figuring out where that goes. That's wrong. See how I have the painter receiving paint from the right? It's supposed to be receiving paint from the left. So I actually botched that and that wasted a lot of my time. So 
keep that in mind as you do this. And again, I would really encourage you, and I'll try to put a link in the description to his video, but Bill Evans' uh, video on the speed run, um, look at his. He goes a lot smoother than I do, and highly recommend checking that out. Um, but yep, there it is there. I realized my mistake, and now I'm putting in the balancer where it goes. I'm removing all the painters, and I'm about to re, uh, replace those painters with painters oriented in the right direction. Um, okay, yep, there it goes. And now we're going to have paint coming in. Now I need to put another tunnel in, actually. All right, is that what's going on? Oh, yep, see? Eh, I deleted, deleted some of them, but... Anyway, okay, so we've added that. Now we add a tunnel for that. We redirect the belt. And this is where the control comes in really, see? I hit shift by mistake. This is where my uh, dexterity was just so bad. Coordinating, hit, uh, hit the down belts, and then use control, click and drag, and it puts down belts all across from one another, side by side. That's what you want. I've never used these uh, these functions before and I kind of paid for it because this took a lot of time that I didn't need to give Okay, so there we go Had that Okay, and I think I have to put one more tunnel in place. Is that right? Did I? Or did I not yet there it is Okay, yep tunnel in place good. So there's the red circles So we're gonna go ahead and bring them right to the hub and what was next? I think next we're going to concentrate. There's blue squares. Notice the lower lowest one there says blue half squares. So we're checking our time and we've already consumed 15 minutes. I'm not quite sure how far we are into this actual video, but uh, yeah, 15 minutes has elapsed and we're really nowhere near at that point. I'm like, yeah, there's no way we're going to, there's no way we're going to hit that 30 minute mark, but you know, whatever. So now here I'm setting up the same array for the blue squares, but there's going to be a slight difference here. As you'll see, we're actually going to add a, uh, we're actually going to add a little appendage in the lower right that is going to basically a slicing rotating array, three of them together, are going to take the output of this machine and uh, uh, cut the squares and then rotate one of the halves 180 degrees and then we're gonna feed it to the to the hub. And that should f meet the needs for tearing up, I think it's extractors or painters and mixers, I'm not sure. But yeah, again, it's mad props to him, to Bill Evans for planning this all out. Cause really, if you watch this video, you're gonna see, okay, there we go. We got our, is that the counterclockwise rotator or is that just, any rotator it might just be any rotator but we're gonna see that um, he keeps you busy the method keeps you busy you're not waiting for anything to happen until the very end when you've done everything and you're just waiting to get waiting for those shapes to to make their way to the hub you've done it all then it's uh, you know just a matter of waiting but the key to this is there can't be any um, there can't be any waiting around also, one thing that does work in your favor is that, okay, here we're hunting for the blue squares again, and I wasted time by picking a stupid source for blue squares. I don't know why I did that. I should have gone farther afield to find squares than to mess around trying to put it in the belt. But, uh, what was I saying? Um, but yeah, you're going to see that one of the things that works in your favor is that when you bring a shape to the hub, you, it doesn't have to be a required shape at that moment. If that shape is required later on, you get credit for any that might be waiting in the hub already. So you're gonna see sometimes um, in this, I think we actually get level 11, but then level 12 happens immediately then thereafter because by the time level 11 is completed, all the shapes needed to complete level 12 are already in the hub. So, boom, nice little thing there. Okay, so again, we're consult notice. It's just a variation of the same eight extractors, seven balancers that we've used in the past. So we're bringing this. Oh, see, there's squares right there. You know what? I think I avoided that one because I knew that the painting array 
was going to be above it and I couldn't remember if those squares are needed for the painting array. I don't think they ever are. I think we actually cut off the source of squares at some point. Okay, so there's the squares and then we're looking for blue paint because obviously there are blue squares that we need. So again, there's the setup. Get used to that, four and four to make eight and then the three balancers, three balancers and then the, the uh, balancer that brings them both together and the whole belt planning thing. I am so glad I learned about that. So, so yeah, basically what's going on here, once we get this up here to the painter, just like we made for the red circles, oh right, belt, yeah. Remember, shapes go in the middle and then the uh, color goes in the top array of balancers. Okay, now we set up the little appendage at the bottom here and just pay close attention to how this is built but it's basically just slicers and then one of the halves is rotated 180 degrees in the direction that we need and then both the halves are both types of halves are fed together onto one belt and that belt goes to the hub so that one's too easy so hopefully I don't fumble things up too badly so again you can click and drag the rotators and why did I do? Oh, because I had it back, right upside down. Got it. Okay. And then the uh, and then the belts. Let's see those. Yep. Bam, bam, bam. And balancers. Cool beans. All right. And that goes to the hub. And that should start. It should already start to be giving us the squares that we need. Now another thing too is. Okay, now we're constructing the remaining two uh, painters that we need. Now, keep in mind, in the course of this game, uh, painters are repurposed. We don't go through the uh, trouble of making super fast painting arrays and then deleting them and rebuilding them. It doesn't happen. So what ends up happening is we repurpose some of the older painters. So you're going to actually see there's a few cases where these painters, um, they're pa one minute, if you're not watching, they're painting one thing, and then the next minute you'll see, hey, wait a second, what about the purple square? Or what about the uh, red circles? Now they're purple. So notice, that's what's going to happen here. We actually use that painting array, number three, to, uh, to go from painting red circles to painting purple circles. But for that, we need the mixer, and we don't quite have that yet. But I think that might be our next... Um, that might be our next milestone. I just can't remember. But right now, we're concentrating on constructing the remaining two arrays, painting arrays, one and two. And just notice, as the upgrades come, we go ahead, we hit the upgrades, just roll with it. And, uh, and again, it just all makes our job easier, all those arrays. So, I can't remember exactly if there was any particular difficulty with this that I can recall, but no, I think these are the painting array constructions that you want to pay close attention to because these actually I managed to put together correctly. Couple of couple of foibles, but for the most part, I had very little trouble getting this together. So dexterity is a key, you know, practice. I know it's gonna take me a lot of practice to get this process down, but you know what? It's I gonna get this hundred percent that's worth it to me so and I think we go straight from painting these to start setting up the mixing arrays I might be wrong I can't remember okay now I think wait did, did I wait I did not put inputs to the paint okay I didn't put inputs to that painter but I think that ends up getting corrected well I know it does okay so now we're setting up mixing arrays. So we're doing it kind of the same way as the painting arrays, except we're setting up three arrays instead of four. So instead of going 20 high, we're going 15. Okay, if that makes sense. Instead of, you know, times four, it's times three. So you need five arrays, five balancers high for each array. But also, instead of going 12 deep, we're going 10 deep because they're mixers, not painters. So it goes a little bit quicker. At I think that was the reasoning behind it. And I think we just got it, right? We just leveled up and got access to the to the mixers. So that's awesome. That tells us that the process, that the order of operations that we're doing is working. So again, if you look to the upper left or 
just to the left, you can see the fuchsia circles that we're aiming for. So, but in order to do that, we have to be able to mix some red and blue paint, and that is kind of what we're about to do, I think. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead setting up, I think, are we setting up all the arrays? I don't remember. I think it was just this one. I may be wrong. And why the long pause? What was I doing? Don't remember. Huh, okay. Apparently something was important. There we go, whatever it was. Probably checking this piece of paper. Okay, upgrading there, there we go. And keep in mind too, there is a point that we just don't try. We just don't try to aim for and we do not go for the red pinwheels. We don't go for the red fans. Just don't go for them. So you're gonna see that that's not even something we attempt. That particular item, we've tiered all the way up, all the tiering we're going to do. And you can see there's the offset that we're creating. Again, basically same layout as the painters. It's just, instead of painters, we're using mixers. They fit very nicely. So I don't know if he came up with, with this design, but it is freaking awesome. The fact that it can be used for a slicer and it can be used for a painter and it can be used for a stacker. So not very nice. Okay, and I made too many, because I didn't really bother counting, I just clicked and dragged. I made too many of those balancers, so. So now, okay, so I think we're setting up, this is red and blue, um, and I think red and blue is the, is it the lower one? Um, I can't, no, 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 no. The uh, purple one is going to be array number two, which is gonna be the middle one. There are three arrays, top one is number one, and uh, the bottom, will be number three, middle number two. And I think I foobarred that. One of those I foobarred. I can't tell which one, whatever. Okay. But I guess, see, I think even some of the mixers were using a couple times and even to make white, it's kind of crazy. I think the bottom one we don't ever actually use until it's time to make white paint. And then we just run green to it, I think. I can't recall, but but yeah, the, uh, this, the way this ends up is just, you've got like so many irons in the fire, you've got so many things that you're working on at any given time, it's kinda cool. Okay, and again, with the tunnels, I know it looks really confusing with all those, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down, but that does go away. Well, they don't go away, but they, they do prove just not necessary and you don't need to get too confused about it. And another thing that pay close attention to start points when he starts to click and drag, it might not seem to make sense why he put this particular item in a particular place, but once you start laying the belts out, it starts to make sense. But it's just part of learning how to do this and uh, just making, a, making an effort to rehearse it, as silly as that sounds. You have to like, why did I leave that there? Oh, okay, no, just lay the stack, just lay the mixers. Okay, okay, whatever. Okay, now this right here, this is an example of you hit the control key and you can drag the belts and they'll all, they'll all go up and down, even if you're dragging sideways. Kinda cool. Okay, so go ahead and put the, uh, yeah, there you go. Talking to myself. <laughs> there you go, see, they fit nice and nice and neatly in there and then you can take the belts and drag them. And that works out really well. And I think that, uh, and in this case, it doesn't matter which paint, uh, if, you know, whatever paint you're making, it doesn't matter which goes in the top or the middle because it's just a mixer. It would with a stacker and a painter, but with the uh, paint mixer, it doesn't matter. So anyway, getting these two things set up and I don't know, did I set up the one below it? Do I actually spend all this time working on um, all three? I guess I do. Because you notice when we did the painters, we didn't do all four. We didn't construct all four at the same time. We needed that time so that some of the painters were doing work while we concentrated on the other painters. So we got enough needed to do the work we needed, but um, okay, yeah, that's right. But uh, when it came time, you know, when it came time that we needed them, those other painters, that's when we started to set them up. 
butt. So we didn't waste all that time trying to set up four painters and then go back to the first one that we needed. Doesn't make any sense. And something's wrong. All right. Am I wrong? Nope. Oh, that's right. That's right. Just I got some extra belts there, so it looked confusing. But, uh, okay, so now I think we're looking for red and blue paint. And we don't pay a, we don't spend a lot of time looking for it, obviously, but um, we do need to spend some, which is kind of a pain. See, like right now, we should be thinking about the teardrops for that one teardrop shape, but we haven't, uh, haven't found it yet. And right there, see, I didn't need six, but rather than switching gears and going from dr clicking and dragging to erasing, I figured it was better. I, it's not gonna, six is too many, but it'll still work. So I just went ahead and uh, left that in place. And that's a key to this, is that even if something is a mistake, it's sometimes more of a waste to spend time deleting that mistake and correcting it than just working around it. And same there, in that case though, I knew that I needed that space for that belt that I, where I overshot the, and then I, so I spent time erasing the belt. I mean, I knew I was gonna have to do that, so I did it. Okay, so we got the red, now we're gonna get the blue. Same, again, eight extractors to three balancers. Well, three and three, and then one. So, get used to that. Seems to work. Oh, that, that's another thing too is notice I spend a lot of time rotating and I'm so used to hitting the rotate key and I can look at it and subconsciously know which direction I need to rotate. But the problem is I'm using the shift key so much for clicking and dragging that I tend to forget that when you hold the shift key down, it rotates in the other direction. And I, I lose sight of that and it's just confusing. So I end up like, ah, oh, well, let me keep rotating it then. Better hit the rotate key three more times than hunt for the, uh, or let go of the shift key and then hit the rotate once. You know, if that makes sense. Oh man, yawn, sorry, you're welcome. I sent you guys a yawn. But there, right there, I cut off the red paint and took the output of the purple paint mixers into the squares. And later on, we actually take the output of the purple and we bring it into the painter below it and mix it with green paint, which of course creates white. And we're gonna use that for our circles. That's one of the biggest pains in this is actually finding the, uh, the white paint. So I wondered, you know, before I started this, how did they do it? How did he do it? And uh, got a pretty good answer for that. So that's pretty awesome. Another two is the, uh, that I find confusing still is the uh, the shape? It looks like a mushroom on top, and then star legs below. That piece, he has a whole elaborate setup for that one too, based on the uh, compact balancer, I guess you'd call it. And uh, that thing comes in handy, but the design he uses, uh, I had a brain fart as to what each end of the arrangement looks like. I kind of have a picture of the middle but I needed a picture of the end and I didn't have one and I kind of had to guess at the arrangement of the uh, balancers. You'll see when we get there. But like I said, check his video out for all that information, really. And then hopefully, again, this is, I'm hoping, learning all of this, that I'm gonna be able to, uh, I'm gonna be able to use it to create and to beat the 30-minute uh, achievement. He did it, so I guess I can, maybe, I can try. I'll give it my best. Okay, 30 minutes, so we obviously, at that point, not going to make the, uh, not going to make the 30 minutes. It, time has elapsed, so it's actually gonna take me a little while longer, and I don't know what in the world I was thinking here. Again, I was thinking, oh, I don't wanna rotate, I don't wanna erase those and rotate them the other way. Let me see if I can consolidate them this way. Then I realized that's stupid. Just go with what I know. Don't try to invent the wheel or reinvent the wheel. Just go with what you know and what is muscle memory. And that's what I did here, try to do this. So, okay, so we're getting the green paint. Now I think at this point, I'm thinking that the, uh, the green paint is going to the bottom array and it's gonna be ready for the white paint perhaps, maybe? Can't remember. 
in. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna, yep, we're bringing it to the lowest array. And that will work. And then what? Okay, so now I think we're, I think at this point we start to hunt for the stars that we're going to need for the level 11 shape. As you can see, fuchsia circles are already being counted, so they're going into the hub. That's great. So now hunting for the stars, there we go. Reaching for the stars. Okay, so clicking and dragging, four and four, same old design. Now these are going to go to the mixer that will have green and blue paint. Have I done that yet? I don't know that I have. So we're making aquamarine paint in the first, yeah, yeah I did. Okay, cool, blue and green, got it. Um, we're bringing the stars down and this is gonna go to the painter the very top or the, no, I guess not the top. Okay, so it's gonna to go to painter array number two and we're gonna paint them aquamarine. See, we are already preparing for level 11 right here. We're already preparing for completing level 11 because it takes time. So while we're waiting for our purple circles to, uh, to add up to the number we want, which I can't really read it, I think it's 600. While we're doing that, we're working on getting the, uh, getting the what you call it, <coughs> excuse me, getting the, uh, okay, what's going on here? Do I actually bring this into the hub? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, not sure why. I don't think that was necessary. So, but I did it, whatever. Okay, so that is done. Painter, painting array one, is it already done? I think it is. Oh, there we go, there we go. And I needed to do that with the array above it. Painter one still needs the inputs for the die into the actual painters. If you can see, I didn't do that. So I think I'm double checking and something's wrong. Nope, didn't see it. Okay, there's the compact merger. Okay, balancer, merger, whatever. Splitter, call it whatever you want. Okay, green paint, and this is going to what now? I'm trying to remember, is this for the circles? So why are we making three? Um, I'm trying to remember, why are we, or why are we getting more green paint? Didn't we already do this? And so, okay, may, okay, that, the green paint before was for, um, was for the aquamarine. This is actually going to be to paint the green circles for shape 11. Okay, now shape, okay. That's right, There, one of the levels is aquamarine stars. So therefore, yeah, we brought the stars to the hub. Okay, I forgot that. Yeah, that's one of the levels we need. <laughs> okay, so that's what some of the green paint is for and the rest of the green paint. Okay, rerouting that because we want those circles. And those circles are going to get painted green. And they will get attached to the halves of the, uh, of the, of the aquamarine stars. Okay, so we're taking these circle extractors and we're gonna bring them to painter array one, along with the green extractors. So that we're gonna start production of our green circles. And I'm, I like to find, you know, rows of resources that are two by four, but I didn't find any in this patch. So I actually made this kind of funky looking, uh, I made this funky looking uh, arrangement here. It seems to work. And did I actually follow through and, no, I didn't, I didn't. That's gonna cost me later, I think. All right, so these also getting painted green, yes. Isn't that what I said? And once we do that, once we get those circle extractors feeding into this painter, then we do the update and now we need to find the teardrop. So you're gonna see me hunting all over the map to find the teardrop that we're going to paint blue. That's really critical to shape number 12. Now, we could try to cobble together some shapes, but that's time that we don't really have. So we could cobble together circles and squares to make it, but they exist on the map, so it's to our benefit to actually go find them and just extract them just like this. Even if we have to run the belt a long distance, this actually is really helpful for us. Um, rather than, again, trying to 
set up a whole stacker and everything to make them. We don't want to do that. Time wasted. So, and I'm still, ha I still haven't got this arrangement down, muscle memory, but doing the best I can. So now we got to take these things. We're going to actually bring them up to the uh, painting array that I think it's array number four that's currently painting blue squares. We want to paint, obviously, these teardrops. We want to paint them blue. Also, notice um, that in this, I found teardrops that were oriented exactly the way we needed. Okay, so I just straight up cut the squares right off. I just, we don't need them anymore. I cut them right off and put the belt with the uh, teardrops right in place of that. But what I was getting at is that uh, the teardrops that I found are oriented pointing upper left, which is exactly what we need. What I would have done, and I'm, by the way, I'm deleting that little appendage because we don't need it anymore. What I would have done, and there's the stacker, is uh, put a rotator on the, right after the bank of extractors and balancers before it goes into one belt. I would have put two rotators identical to each other, two banks of rotators that are going to you know, rotate both belts in whatever direction they need to be in order to make them pointing uh, northwest and then belt them into one. Okay, so what I've just done is I've taken the output of the purple paint mixer, uh, which is mixer number two, and put it into one of the feeds of mixer number three with the green paint. So now we're producing the white paint. Now the, the, uh, the, the uh, painting array that was painting purple circles, all we have to do is take the purple out of it and uh, just feed in the white paint. And we're just gonna go ahead and let any purple paint that's in that system trickle through and then eventually the white paint will trickle through and start sending us white circles. And we're just gonna go ahead and send them to the hub for now. But see, there we go, right there, time saved because we don't have to create another whole, we don't have to find another source of circles. We don't have to find, uh, we don't have to find space for yet another paint mixer. We don't have to find space for a painter. We just reuse the old ones because frankly, we don't need them anymore. Even for tearing up, we don't do much tearing up at this point. We're about as tiered up as we're going to get. So what we're doing now is we're making a single painting array or a stacking array. It's the stacking array, which we put together exactly like a painting array, except instead of a painter, we have a stacker. So you can see we're putting the offset in there and deleting that, and that's the proper arrangement. So I think this one actually went together really well, if I'm not mistaken. And just pay close attention to the way this is constructed because I really do think this went pretty, pretty well, if I'm not mistaken. So, and again, pay close attention to, I think the white circles come in the top and the blue teardrops come in the side in the middle. And you're, you're gonna see how they, how that works out. And you can already see the blue uh, teardrops are up there waiting for us to feed them into this machine. Not, okay, something happened here. I was hitting a key at several times for some reason. I don't know why I kept hitting the blueprint key and it kept doing that. Did it like two or three times. Uh, eventually I pull my head out of my butt and it stops. Okay, and then, yep, there I did the same thing with a belt. We left that extra belt there. And right, control, hit control, drag the belt sideways. And then, number seven, stacker, and click and drag. And that worked out beautifully. So there we go. And again, the control, hit the control key with the belt pointing downward and drag it sideways. There you go. So then, again, I think the teardrops come in the middle of the left side, right there in that, there's three rows of balancers. It hits the middle row and the circles, of course, hit the top row. And that should stack them properly. And like I said, I got really lucky in that the, the um, teardrops that I found, I didn't have to put any rotators on whatsoever. Uh, Bill Evans, the uh, guy who made the video, he actually ended up having to put some balancers on his source. So, um, but yet he still managed to do it in under 30 minutes. So obviously practiced, very awesome. Okay, so now we've done that. We've got the blueprint. I call them the blueprint bucks. Okay, see we're at 39 minutes already. I call them the blueprint bucks, um, the uh, blue and white shape. 
but they're already filling the hub. So now what we need to do is we're working on the stacker array for the uh, the shape you see on the far left there, that uh, green mushroom with the blue legs, the aquamarine legs to be more specific. So I'm notice I'm measuring out these uh, two rows of balancers. I, obviously, I don't need all these balancers, but it's I'm using them for counting right now. We're making basically an array that is 48 balancers long, and I'm trying to measure out 48 balancers. And there are two rows of, uh, of feeds in this thing, and that's what I'm creating right now. Now, I didn't get quite right, or maybe I did, I don't know, is exactly how this starts exactly how this array starts. You can see the spacing that I do right there. I think I got that correct. That you start with one balancer in the upper left and then three in the in the lower left. And then just follow that pattern just like I'm doing it. I, the pattern is correct. I just don't remember if it's the upper, um, if it's the upper row that starts with one balancer and then three, 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 or the lower row. Um, next video, I'm gonna square that away and get that, get that, uh, get that straightened out so okay I was looking through and I think I grabbed oops I think I grabbed something I wasn't supposed to grab um, okay I've got something something here that I think it's a label but I'm hoping hoping my wife doesn't need it <laughs> because I just grabbed the stack of papers so anyway um, I just kind of botched this thing. I think I edited it out, but I botched the laying out of the slicers. Uh, make Notice there's a row of slicers and I had to actually create a dead space in between the top row of balancers and the slicers. One, a uh, one row of dead space and that gets filled up. But um, anyway, that's part of the key of getting this done. And you're going to see this is a new, this is a pretty crazy arrangement. The way he did this is you're gonna have the slicers. I think I put way too many slicers. Ideally, you want 24 sets, I think is what it comes out to. 24 slicers and 24 stackers. But the stackers and the slicers are offset from one another with uh, rotators in between. So it's gonna be hard to spot as I'm doing this, but what's what you're going to see is that uh, the slicer, um, you're going to see that a slicer might have a, you know, counterclockwise rotator, then a clockwise rotator. And then right next to it will be a clockwise rotator and a counterclockwise rotator. So the slicers obviously take up two spaces like that. They take their two across. And you're going to see that each slicer has two rotators on it. And um, the rotators... Um, how do I put this? The arrangement of the rotators on the first slicer, where it might be clockwise, counterclockwise, is going to be opposite to the second one. The second one will be whatever the, let's say the first one is, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise. The second one will be counterclockwise, clockwise. See, notice, pay close attention to these slicers, or to these rotators in relation to the slicers. See, I did clockwise. Then here's a counter and a counter right next to it. Now notice after that, it's just two counters and two uh, clockwise, two counters, two clockwise, two counters, and see how they're arranged, if that makes sense. Hopefully this makes sense. But uh, it's, I mean, the pattern is pretty simple. I just kept going with it because I wasn't sure how many I wanted to make. At this point, you just want as many of these banks working as possible, and I just, I, because I wasn't sure about the way I set things up, I just wanted to make sure that at least some of them were right and I didn't care how many I made. And then notice, notice the balancers, look, or the, uh, the stackers in relation to the slicers. Pay close attention, they, they're staggered, okay? And this is really important. And then I just took the, uh, the compact mergers and uh, just made like twice as many as I needed. I clicked and dragged them. We don't need that many. It only needs to be every other one, but it's easier to click and drag, you know, 20 of them than it is to precisely place 10 of them. Does that make sense? 
Okay, now notice I put the circles in the top row and I'm gonna put the uh, I'm gonna put the stars in the bottom row. Now you can pay close attention if you want. If you get the if you get the angles wrong, then just reverse the feeds. You don't have to tear the whole thing apart, just reverse the feeds. As long as the general arrangement is correct, then um, which is which doesn't really matter. Just reverse the feeds if it does if it comes out looking messed up. And then notice it, all those mergers are feeding onto one belt and somewhere in the middle I just pull the belt out and then that creates one belt and then all the other ones to the right are going to form a second belt. So you are actually going to feed these into the hub in two belts. So that is pretty awesome because there's so many that you need. Now keep in mind right now we are feeding the level 12 shape which we don't even need yet but they're already being fed into the hub. So the key right now is getting these kind of complicated shapes into the hub too. Because really I think these are harder than the uh, I think these are harder than the level 12 shapes, to be honest. Um, both of them we need a thousand of, but we end up getting the blueprint shapes before we get the uh, before we get these shapes. Okay, so we're about to wind up here. So anyway, there we go. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this is helpful. I hope you find this useful. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And let's just let this thing peter out. And uh, I will see you in the next attempt. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And, and again, be with me on the next attempt. We'll see you. There it is right there. Bing. Got it. So all right, guys. Take care. Have a wonderful day. And uh, I will see you later. Ciao.